Good morning! I'm here at the 4th of July trailhead inside the Roosevelt National Forest. And once again, this is just outside of the Indian Peaks Wilderness. And today, I'm going to go for Jasper Peak. Looking at a little over 3 miles out and probably over a 2,700 foot elevation gain. I'm not sure. It's something like that. Official start time, 7.40 a.m. We are now entering the Indian Peaks Wilderness. I'm already starting to see little spots of snow here and there. So I'm pretty sure there's gonna be more at the top. I mean, that's still another half a mile above me. I did bring my heated gloves and micro spikes. So hopefully I'm prepared. And there it is, Jasper Peak. That's the unofficial name. Pretty much it's called that because I guess there's a register that's been up there since the 70s that calls it Jasper Peak. So that's what everybody calls it. And then off to the right, Mount Neva. So what I'm basically doing is hiking the one mile up to the Diamond Lake Trail Split. I'm gonna take the Diamond Lake Trail Split to the left, hike down the hill, and then as soon as I pass the water, I'm gonna cut off and start bushwhacking up. And that is when the hike is gonna start getting interesting. All right, and I'm already up here to the first trail split. I'm gonna hang the left and then just take it on down the hill a tiny bit. And then as soon as I cross over the bridges, that's where I'm gonna split off and start bushwhacking. The good thing about this hike is that it's not super duper long. I mean, it's just a little over three miles out. So that's not too bad. And there are enough people out here that if I have to use the BRW, the bear rape whistle, hopefully they'll hear me. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna be able to come help me, but they'll hear me. I believe this is gonna be it. Don't quote me, but I think this is the middle Boulder Creek. taking a quick five minute break right here at the middle boulder creek crossing and this is one of the most amazing spots ever right here this is incredible i was hoping that once i crossed the water there'd be some kind of a social trail right here and i think there is check it out I'm going to follow this for a little bit and just past that last video spot I ran into a little trail split. I'm going to take this one here. Yeah, there are little trails all over out here. I don't know if any of them are going to be reliable. I might have to just go strictly off the GPS. I pretty much have no idea what I'm doing right now. Just walking through the trees, seeing if I can get myself lost out here. This is one that I wish I had a hiking partner on, but I got the day off yesterday 
it was late notice and nobody could join me. I just ran into some water. So I think I'm gonna stay to the left of it and continue up. It looks pretty good through here. I just checked the GPS and I am in the perfect spot. I'm just going to continue up right here and this looks pretty good. Still looking good. I'm coming up between these two knobs right here. And I'm just gonna keep heading up in this direction. I'm already to bust through the trees and this should get a little easier now because I can kind of see where I'm going. I'm going to hop over the water right here and continue up and this is going to be pretty awesome. That's looking back behind me, up at South Arapaho Peak. Old Baldy off to the right. Quarter to five peak off to the left. And that's looking back at where I've come from. And this is the spot that you wanna be in. I'm coming up right in between these two knobs. And here's the other one. This is looking up at the next section. Now I'm gonna start heading it off to the right a little bit and aim in the general direction, kind of to the left of that high point. I'm gonna pretend like that's a Karen and that I'm going in the correct direction. Woo! Beautiful day. Look at that sky. Wow, this is spectacular. Unbelievable. I'm just taking my time going through here. I'm by myself, so I've got to be extra careful. The book was lying when it said that it was only a half mile to the Diamond Lakes split. It's actually one mile right there, but they were not lying when they said that the bushwhack is worth it. It is. This is amazing up here. This next section looks like it is gonna be the steepest. This looks pretty brutal right here, but I gotta get up on the next shelf so I'm going to take it up and stay on the grass as much as I can. Just going to take it on back down here by these little ponds around them to the north. And then just try to hit that incline.
Okay, this is looking up at the next part. And I think I'm gonna take it up right there and stay on the grassy sections as much as I can. I'm about two tenths of a mile away from the lake. It's literally just right up here, up on that little shelf. And then I should see the rest of the route from there. I'm gonna cross the water right here, try and get on those little grassy parts and take that up. And I think I'm going to drop down right there to do it. This is what it looks like on the other side of the water. Pretty easy. Well, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it looks better than the other side of the water. I can tell you that. I've made it up onto the shelf and I think the rest of this does look doable doesn't look too steep over there just some lingering snow nothing really deep or anything and there's the lake all right and I can actually see the airplane wreckage on the other side of it someone crashed a little plane up here I'm just taking it around to the south of the lake. It's pretty easy right here. So far, I think I'm doing this right. It's all been class two. And that's what I got left. Just gonna have to hike it up those rocks. This is a little out of the way, but I want to go check this plane wreckage out real quick. It's just right over here. Something tells me that this guy didn't survive. I mean, I don't know how you could.
Well, I've been standing up here at this wreckage for only a few minutes. That's pretty sad. But I gotta keep this hike going. I'm still looking at another 1,300 feet in elevation gain. It doesn't look too, too bad. Just gonna take it in sections. Luckily, I got the weather on my side today, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm a little bit out of position right here. I wanna be on this little ramp and take that on up. I've made it up here to the ramp. I think I can get that. Well, I'm getting up this thing and it's really not too bad. I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought this was all just gonna be just super loose rock. I mean, there's some loose rock, but we also got a lot of grass up here too. It's getting pretty loose and a lot steeper here right at the end. I can see why they say this is better when it has snow in it. I'm getting up this quick though. I'm surprising myself. And that's all I've got left until I gain the ridge. Oh, this last tenth of a mile or so has been absolutely brutal. Super loose. And it's gonna be pure hell going down it. I mean, that is gonna, it's gonna be bad. And then this is looking at what I have left to get up to the ridge. And that is like straight up. However, it looks pretty solid right here. So I think I can climb it. Okay. I've made up that real steep section and I think I'm looking good up to the ridge and then we'll take it from there. But I'm getting real close to the summit now. I'm about two tenths of a mile away. And check out the Karen right there. All right. We're gonna get this guys. We're gonna get this, holy moly. Oh my goodness. Wow. And this is what we got left. summit and I'm about 200 feet below it. I'm 
made it up to the high point, but that was just a false summit. I still got to navigate this ridge to get up there. straight up noon right now so that took four hours and 20 minutes tough hike I mean for only being like three and a half miles it sure took a long time but look at the clarity today unbelievable that's going to be the windbreak up here on the summit and that's probably also where the register is but I'm not gonna go digging through that snow to find it. We've got excellent clarity today, and I can see all the way up there to Long's Peak, Mount Meeker, and then there in the foreground, that's Apache Peak, Dicker's Peck, and Navajo Peak. This is looking back to the north, and that's big old Mount Neva. All right, guys, it's about one o'clock. I've been sitting up here on the summit of Jasper Peak for about an hour. However, my toes are a little chilly and my fingertips are a little chilly. So it's time to go. It's time to head on back. You want to be careful up here. This thing's kind of narrow. This goes sloping right off to both sides. I mean, it doesn't even slope off to the right. That's just a straight drop off over here. I'm going with the shoulder mount because this is extremely sketchy right here. Holy moly. And the snow is not helping. The snow is not helping. I mean, I've got a straight thousand foot drop off to my right.
I've got to go back up and over this big thing and then straight down the other side. I'm back on top of the fall summit. And the next part is probably going to be the most technical down climbing of the whole thing. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Right there. I'm gonna do this a little different on the way down. Instead of going back up and down the ridge to about right there and then down the snowy part, I'm gonna try and take it down right here, take it over on that grassy part and then down. Let's try and take it down right here and see what happens. So far I like this way much better. It's easier, it's cutting the corner, and I think I'm on the trail. Yeah, coming down over here was better. This worked out pretty good. I'm down here to that little grassy ledge, and I'm gonna cut it over, and then work my way down this real steep hump that kind of sticks out right there. I'm almost down this thing. I'm taking little baby steps. And if I feel anything start to go out from underneath me, I just bend my knees and sit down. On the way up, I came from this direction, kind of popped over this little ridge because the wreckage is over there. However, on the way down, I'm going to head it straight on out this way, stay on the grass as long as I can, and see if it drops down. I think this is going to work. And this cuts off a big old corner. But then again, I mean, you kind of have to go over there if you want to see the airplane wreckage. And I highly recommend it. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's not cool to see a wreck, but it's interesting. All right, guys, and I have made it back down to the lake. This took me an hour and 15 minutes from the summit. And then earlier from the plane wreckage up to the summit took me about an hour and a half. I can't believe I just did that. That was awesome. I've been trying for well over a year to get Jasper Peak. Jamie and I drove all the way down here last year and it was so smoked out. We decided to cut our losses and do a plan B hike.
I'm going to take another break at this beautiful little spot. I'm going to enjoy this day. It's not too terribly late. I don't have six miles I have to hike back. And the weather is perfect. This part's a little tricky, but I remember it. I crossed right here, and then I'm gonna have to go back up and over the top right there. And that's the way you get down the other side. And then once you cross the water right there, keep taking it across for a minute. I don't know if this Karen will always be here, but this is the obvious way down. It's like the only way down. Boy, I can't wait to be back down there. This looks like the very last of the hard part. All right, and I am off the steep rocks. I think I'm gonna have grass and trails the rest of the way. I wouldn't try this hike unless you have a decent amount of experience because you're going to have to use all your skills on it. Bushwhacking, climbing, scrambling, you name it. And I would also bring a GPS because I've had to do a few course corrections already just to get back over here. Yeah, a GPS is pretty much necessary. I'm telling you what, this is confusing back here. I've had to turn around like 10 times and course correct. Otherwise, I mean, if I didn't have that GPS, I guarantee you, I would have went down in the wrong place. It's tough because this bushwhack is not a straight line at all. You're curving and winding around and it's difficult. And I've made it back to where the trail crosses over the middle Boulder Creek. And with my break, this took two and a half hours to get down here from the summit. Oh, thank God. The rest of this hike is gonna be easy. Oh man, this entire half mile of the Diamond Lake Trail is all uphill. I mean, it's virtually all uphill, just different degrees of uphill. guys it's just now 4 15 which means it took three hours and 15 minutes to come down that's pretty good it took me four hours and 20 minutes to get up but that was a great hike even though it didn't have huge stats it was still pretty difficult all right jasper peak in the books hope you enjoyed it and until the next hike y'all peace